Uh, so Rennie's is making the, the comment here. It's not really a question. Uh, Bloodhand will be invaluable addition to lens setup for automating and greatly reducing the confusing clutter. So, yep, exactly, Randy. So as you guys saw, Lynn has a lot going on under charts. And, you know, so that's one of the uh, probably the widest, uh, greatest use of Bloodhound. And I think people are finding is uh, it does clean up your charts. So you can take all those indicators and uh, basically get, uh, you know, these nice, clean uh, green and, and red signals uh, that this kind of, visually much quicker and cleaner to see especially when you're trying to you know place your trades um, typically the sooner you can get in the better price you're gonna get so um, all right so Adam's got a question here can you show a technique to trade using the MACD but only trade the sweet spot also it has to have a slope uh, let's see, say from minus 20 to plus 20. Um, so Adam, do you have a microphone so you can kind of um, clarify your question here? We can work on it together because I'm not to see. So let me read this again. So can you show a technique to trade using the MACD but only trade the sweet spot? So Adam, I guess that's kind of what I'm not sure. I mean, what what do you consider the sweet spot? Um, I take it you meaning like the sweet spot being minus 20 to plus 20. Um, so you're only wanting to see um, like conditions that happen within minus 20 to plus 20 on the MACD and um, so Adam, do you have a microphone? Would you mind speaking up? Let's see. So on a scale of minus 100 to plus 100, um, well, Adam, the problem with the thing about the MACD is, is the, um, the values of the MACD are totally dependent on the tick size of the instrument and the price of the instrument. So you can see right now the MACD, um, you know, the highest value I have here is 0 .001, right? So we're not even getting close to 100. So that's pretty subjective. Um, so if you have a microphone, we can work on this together if you're not too shy. Um, so let me kind of show you. So like this is on the 6E, right? So the price is is a dollar, you know, 28 right now. And if I switch this over to the ES, you'll see the values on the MACD change dramatically. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just wait for the data to come in here. And um, so I guess Adam, if you're not able to, oops, uh, let me restart an indicator here. So Adam, if you're not able to jump in here, I think I can. I think I, I'll try and attempt to answer your question. I think I know what you're saying. So. Um, so I think you're wanting to kind of know, you know, when the MACD is between a certain range. I think that's what you're trying to convey when you're saying minus 20 to 20. Um, so let, uh, all right, let me just get Bloodhound up again here. Um, And um, so I'm going to pull up, um, let's see, I just want to try and find a good clean chart. <clears throat> 
Mm. Nope. Let me connect to my data feed. So one of these charts here has the MACD on it. <clears throat> Okay, so Adam's sending me some clarifications. So Adam, you're saying, uh, well, trade in the sweet spot of the momentum. Um, yeah, Adam, so that's kind of what I'm not quite understanding is what do you consider this the sweet spot? I've never really heard the MACD is having a, a sweet spot. Um, and so you're wanting me to use the BB MACD. Um, yeah, so I guess so Adam, so what I'm needing from you is to kind of uh, explain to me what is the sweet spot. So, um, and here we go. Here, great. So we got this chart here um, with the BB MACD on it already. So let's use this guy right here. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so Gary's, Gary's kind of piped in here. So he's saying uh, some traders consider the sweet spot to be the cross of the zero line. Um, okay, so that's pretty, that's pretty easy. Um, so let's do, let's work on, uh, let me make this a little make this a little bolder here, easier to read. Um, thicken up these lines a little bit. And all right, let's see the zero line. And um Take a look at that. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> let me get blood out on the chart here. Hey Jeremy, you have your microphone on. Let me um there. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's do a uh, uh, we'll start something simple, the crossing of the uh the BB line, crossing the zero line. So Adam, does that sound about right? Uh let's see. That is cr okay, so and I'm saying uh, that is correct, cross of the zero line. But uh, we want the range uh, to be before and after using some range of the zero line. Um, and then Randy's saying, yet others consider the BB squeeze area as the sweet spot. So it's quite subjective. All right. So Randy, I mean Adam, let me get back to your comment here. So, uh, let's see. So part of your comment is, but we want the range to be before and after using some range of the zero line. Some range of the zero line. Uh, range of the zero line. That's. 
need to try and figure out what you're thinking, what you mean by that, because obviously the zero line doesn't move. Um, so are you looking at, so you're wanting to make sure that the BB line stays within a certain range before it crosses the zero line? Maybe that's what you're considering. Um, so, all right. So now this is making sense. So the BB MACD ranges, I can see the, you know, we're ranging all the way up to 250 here. Um, all right, well, let me get something started. And let me put a name in here and we'll start building. Um, all right, so let's see, today's the 29th. Okay, now you guys are probably know how to do this part already. So let's start off with the basic, you know, our basic condition is looking at the zero line crossing. Um, let's get things set up here. All right, so we need to set our indicator A to the BB, uh, the BB line. And let's see, I'm just using the MACD. Um, probably using the default settings on here. There we go. All right. And we want to we want to analyze the BB MACD line, right? And indicator B, we're not actually comparing to an indicator, we're actually comparing to a a static value or an absolute value of 0 for the zero line. So there we go. Um, great. So we have our cross down and our cross up identified. Um, and so Adam, so Adam, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with saying that you're trying to see um, if the BB line stays within a certain value. Um, you'd mentioned. Uh, minus 20 to plus 20 and it looks like with the NQ using a five better rank go um, you know 20 is pretty too small so let me go with a hundred so we'll try and figure this out and see if uh, if the last swing point was um, less than a hundred right? So, right. So what we're so what I'm thinking is that we can use the swing indicator, right, to capture the 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 swing point value. Which uh, let me get some other indicators on here, and. Uh, there we go. I want that guy. And let me get my little logo on here. <clears throat> I guess I'll just mark it with a circle. So we're wanting to find the, the price value of you know that this swing point here. And Let's see, uh, we don't cross the zero line <clears throat> there. Let's see, we do cross the zero line there, so, and this, and, <clears throat> so here's our swing point, swing points that we'll look at, and we'll look at building a filter so that if the swing points are greater than 100 or less than negative 100, 
we won't um, we won't get this cross uh, we won't get these uh, crossing signals here. Uh, so Adam, if that kind of sounds about on track, uh, let me know. I'd appreciate that. Um, um, so I need to I need some way of knowing what what the uh, indicator value is at these swing points. Uh, so what I'm going to use is uh, I'm going to use the swing indicator. And uh, instead of using NinjaTrader Swing Indicator, I'm going to use the one that we have here, the Swing Highs and Lows, because <clears throat> um, this holds on to the swing values much longer than, than NinjaTrader's sw Swing Indicator. So this is a, a little more effective to use here. Um, let me add it on there. And so I need to apply this to the indicator. So I'm going to, have to change the input series and switch it over to the back D indicator. So there we go. Select that. So and um, make sure I got the right plot selected. Yep. So I want to analyze the the BB line so we got that set um, and let's see I believe I'm gonna have to do some uh, what some testing on this indicator to make sure make sure I'm uh, which plots I want to use I'm pretty sure I, I I'm pretty sure I just want to use the widest, uh, widest plots here. So I'm going to start off by turning these tightest plots off. So let's make them transparent. And I'm going to make this a little easier to read. So let's see, how about a dark red um, thicken the line there a little bit and um, I'll convert it into dots. That's what I think most of us are used to seeing are the dots for the swing points. And all right, so that's the bottom, so the tops. Um, I'll use a green. <clears throat> All right, green, set this up the same, dots, all right, let's see how that looks, and, oh, and I need to put it on the right price panel, so, all right, let's take a look, and, um, Now, so here's what I'm seeing. Um, so this swing value was identified, but since this one was lower, it was not identified by the indicator because it was, it was a little lower. So I need to adjust my indicator so that the widest plots are ad identifying the most recent one. So I think, uh, let's see here, not the sensitivity, number of swing, I think if I set that to Two. There we go. So setting that to two. Um, there we go. So that works for us. And I'll try and make these a little thicker, a little easier to see for you guys. <clears throat> okay. All right, so I 
think we have our swing indicator set up uh, well. I think we have it set up right to uh, give us the swing values that we're looking for. Um, yeah, so we got this high point identify up here, and then a low point is identified. You can see the red dots, and then this, and then this um, high point here was identified. We can see the green dots on the zero line there, and then we, and then this next low point was identified. So all right, so I think that's going to work good. Um, we'll go with that for now. And okay, so. So how do we so how do we analyze this in Bloodhound? Um, usually, my first thought is this would be a comparison, right? So we um, we can see we could probably use a comparison or a th threshold as well. Um, let's see. Let me let me look at this with the threshold. And we'll see what that gives us. And if that doesn't quite work out well, then we'll use the comparison. So, um, you know, so I kind of like going through stuff um, because obviously this is how you guys are, th are thinking. And this is how I think. I mean, I don't, you know, when I'm trying to analyze something, um, you know, which solver is best, um, you know, trying to, Unless you're an expert chess player, I don't think you can really kind of figure everything out in your head um, to see which which solver would be best. So I um, I like to see things on the chart, and that's how I can quickly determine. I can determine quicker by just putting the condition on the chart and seeing if that's working for me, versus trying to you know figure out the first time which solver is right. Um, so I'm just gonna play with this and we'll use the threshold solver first and see how that works out for us. All right, so let me change the name here, bbmacd. <clears throat> and so the threshold, we're gonna look at the bbmacd um, again and we're gonna look at um, plus 100 to minus 100. <clears throat> mm, all right, so let me think about this. Uh, so 100 there, 100 there. Set so leave that zero and uh, <laughs> Minus 100 and minus 100. Oops. Now, <clears throat> hmm. now we want we want a signal. So we want our solver to generate a signal when we're within our 100, you know, threshold level. So let me just kind of help. Um, let me throw some some lines on the chart here. All right, dash two, set that, let's lock it. Okay, I'll throw another one on here. All right, so we want a signal uh, within these two white line threshold levels, this boundary here, right? So we don't want a signal on this swing point from this swing point value. And so as I'm looking at the threshold solver, um, you know, we'd want so when when the value is greater than 100, we don't want a signal. We don't want an output. Um, so we set this at 1. And, and, and if we're at 0, we, that's within our two threshold levels. So we want a signal there and a signal when we're at minus 100 as well. 
So we're going to get a value, right? So we're going to get a 1 out from the solver uh, between 100 to 0 and from 0 to negative 100. We're going to get a value of 1 out from the solver there. All right, so let me turn off that one. And um, we'll just leave this one on. So now, now I need to go and uh, set the indicator up correctly. Um, and uh, some of you guys have probably noticed I didn't finish setting up. I didn't finish setting up my output, so I'll get back to this in just a moment. Let me put my indicator in here first so that I get some updates on the chart as I'm playing with my output signals here. MACD, and we want the BB line here, so that looks good. Okay, great. So now we're getting some outputs on the chart. Um, and, oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm going too fast. So as you can see, I put the BB into the threshold, but that's not what we're analyzing. So you can see it's working good. So as soon as the BB line you know, goes below 100, right, it's giving us this long, and as soon as it jumps out, there's no signal. But we're actually wanting to analyze the SI swing indicator. So let me go correct that. Okay, so we want the swing indicator, and let's see. So now I have to figure out which plots I want to use. So we're going to get a, so the, the green dotted line, right, that's the widest tops plot right here. So we're going to get a top, um, so the indicator is going to plot on the widest tops before it crosses down across the zero line. So we're going to use the widest tops for our short signal. Um, for when the BB line crosses down the zero line for a short. So we're going to use the widest tops for our short. And then so the widest bottom, we're going to get a plot on the widest bottom before it crosses up for a long signal. So I'll use the widest bottom for the long signals here. <clears throat> and oops. And I also need to nest um, the BB indicator into this indicator. All right, so take the Mac, BB MACD, nest it in there. Um, make sure we got the right, um, the correct data feed into the SI swing. So. So we want the BB line to be fed into the SI swings indicator. All right. There we go. And, um, okay, so now I need to go and correct my outputs here. So a long, um, so I only want a long signal. Let's see when, um, when the widest bottom is above negative uh, 100 to 0. So that should, let's see, I think that's right for the longs and for shorts. There. Um, Okay, so let me take a look at this, and um, kind of looks like I have something backwards here. I've got something crossed up. So, um, I might have the wrong plot selected. Maybe I did get it backwards. Uh, Shorts. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, let's just switch them. And Okay, great. Um, so we can see right here we got our long signal um, from this swing point here. Um, from this swing point, oh, you know what? Uh, now I see why things aren't quite matching up. And that's because the indicator, the values I have in this indicator, um, right, remember I, I had to change my number of swings to two, and I didn't change that in Bloodhound. So let me go back in here, change this to two. Okay, now I think we should be getting something a little better here. Um, Let me reverse these here. I think I need to go back in and change these back to the way I had it. Um, there we go. All right. So, um, so you can see we're getting a long output here. Um, when the red dots right are above negative 100, and you can see that we're not getting we're not getting a signal here um, on the output for the longs here, uh, and that's because the threshold. Remember, the threshold is interpolating between all of these values here. So let's see if I can uh, uh, correct this. Um, Hmm. It's kind of looking like maybe the threshold isn't quite going to give us what we want. Um, Yeah, it looks like the way, um, because the, the threshold is traditionally designed, right, so that if you're greater than than A, right, um, you get a signal, kind of the, th the threshold solver is designed to kind of work from C on out for your signals. It's not really designed to, to capture values in between. So when you're looking for a value you know, in between, or the sweet spot in between, the threshold solver is not quite geared to that so well. Um, however, let's take a look at our next solver here, the comparison. 
and the comparison is we have this neutral output here that we can utilize right so we can utilize this neutral to look when we're um, between our 100 and negative 100 all right so let's um, <laughs> Oh, it's going to take two. Um, let's see, it may take two comparison solvers here. So, uh, first let's get our indicator going. All right, so we're looking at uh, there we go, SI swings. And let me change this to two before I forget. All right. <clears throat> and um, let me set these up, my plots. Now I need to feed the BBMACD into it. So let's nest that in there. And we got the BB line selected. All right. And once again, indicator B is going to be our absolute value of the zero line. <clears throat> and so next, um, because we're using a, an indicator on the sub panel here, we don't want to use ticks. So indicators, indicators move in, in points or, or whole values, right? So think of ticks. Ticks are a, a sub value of the point, um, and indicators move in points. So let's switch this to points, and we'll switch this one to points. <clears throat> and change both of these to 100. And we turn off the threshold, and we'll work with just the comparison. And next, I need to go and um, set up my output. So I want to know when we're in between. Um, all right, so let's take a look at this. Um, all right, so we have the, the bottom plot. All right, the widest bottoms plot, right, which is the red line, and we're getting our signal out as long as it's above negative 100. That's going to keep going forward. And, oh, we ran out of chart. So, okay, let's go backwards. And so perfect. Here we can see the, the swing point here is outside of our negative 100. Uh, threshold value and so there's no longer um, a long condition from our comparison solver so that's good let's keep moving along here and take a look so this swing point is also outside of our negative 100 and there's still no long plot so I'm just ignoring the shorts right now we're only looking at the at the longs here, let me um, just so it's not so distracting. Let me change the evaluate so we're only looking at longs. Okay. Keep scrolling back. All right. So now we come across this swing point right here. And let me mark it. So there we go. And so our, our indicator plot is um, within our sweet spot, right? So it's within um, 100 to negative 100. And so are these other swing points here, right? So we got this one and that one and this one. So I'm pretty satisfied it's working correctly. And let's see what happens here. Wow. Um, 
Oh, we're at the end of our chart, and so we get this erroneous little plot over here. Yeah. So let me show you how to fix this little Ninja Trader tip. So I'm going to open up this indicator and turn the auto scaling off. I don't need the auto scaling on for the SI swings because we'll just use the BB um, the BB MACD to auto scale this this panel here. Um, <clears throat> All right, and so if, as we look at this, right, so here's our zero line down here. So this swing low right here is just below 100, and so we're getting a long condition out of it. So, great. All right, um, let me jump back here where we're working. All right, and uh, bring up the interface. Let's use the comparison solver instead of the threshold. Let me put this back to both signals. And oh yeah, you know what? I did not analyze the shorts here, but um, in analyzing the longs, I'm sure the shorts are going to work. So we have a a swing high point right here. Right, right next to the zero line, so it's definitely within our threshold. This swing high point right here is just outside of 100. Right, it's 120, and so there's no no short plot anymore. It's perfect. There's no short plot for this high point here for this swing high point because it's way above 100. Right, 250. So. Um, and then we have this swing high right here next to the zero line at 26. So, so this guy looks like it's working, working the way we want it to. All right, so let me just give this a name. And <clears throat> plus 100 to minus 100. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and next... So if I just work in the solver tab, if I just turn on our crossover, um, there we go. So now there's no there's no signal here when we cross the zero line. Uh, let's see. Let's So there's our crossing and there's no signal. We can see we have, you know, we get this partial output, uh, which is negative 0.5, and that's because of the crossover solver. Right. Just as when the BBMACD crosses the zero line here, we get this 0.5 on the long side for this crossover condition, but it's not a signal because um, let's see, it's not a signal. Wait, I believe. I believe it actually should be a signal. That's, let me take a look at this. So I'm going to turn off that and um, mm -hmm. oh, I accidentally put it on shorts only. I thought I switched it back to both. There we go. So make sure we're getting longs and shorts out of this solver here. Now let's turn the crossover back on. And there's our signal. All right, perfect. So, and if we want a cleaner looking signal, um, so if we want to demo the using the and logic, we can give a get a cleaner looking signal here. Let's drop that on there. Drop our comparison on there, and I like to always shorten up 
I try and like to make the names short and concise here. So let, let me shorten the comparison. And I like to leave the name of the solver in the name. That way it tells me kind of more more precisely what the solver, you know, what 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 the solver is so I know what it's doing. So um all right. Plug these guys in there. Put our filter in there. So essentially this comparison solver became uh, a filter. All right, so we're filtering out these crossover conditions in the quote sweet spot. All right, and I'm going to fix this. Um, I'm going to fix the scale on the BB MACD. So that way, zero is locked into the middle of our set panel. <clears throat> so there we go. There's our sweet spot. So we get a long signal here, um, filtered by the MACD being above negative 100. Um, and same with the short right here. All right. And then this long. Of course, and of course this um, this crossover was not marked right here because our BB MACD line crossed outside of negative 100. So we didn't get this and it looks like it was a good thing because um, it crossed right at the top of this swing point here. Well, um, Alright, so uh, let me kind of look at the questions here. Uh, so, Adam, if did that answer your question? Did I read your, did I understand your question correctly? So, cool, an outstanding yes. Um, so, yeah, you know, that's a great question. I like doing these types of, uh, these types of questions of, you know, how do you, you know, how do you take your main signal, which is on this instance, it's, the BB line crossing the zero line, you know, how do you take your main signal and then apply filters, you know, which is what we do as humans. We create all these conditional, uh, add all these conditions to our main signal, right, to kind of come up with optimal trade signals. Um, and so I call those filters, right? So we don't want to just take every single crossing the zero line trade. We like to filter them out to uh, put the odds in our favor. So I love building these kind of filters like this for you guys in the workshop. So, all right, that's cool. Um, and, you know, I don't see any other, um, any other questions. And uh, we've had your guys' attention for two hours today. And it is a holiday, and I'm sure you guys, hopefully you guys have something better to do this weekend, three-day weekend. So we'll just wrap it up there. And, uh, We'll see you next next Friday. Um, and uh, for anybody, let's see, uh, if there's any uh, anybody new in this room, I uh, just want to let you guys know that this on Fridays is our customer workshop training. So when you become a a, a customer, um, you know, these Friday workshops are for are exactly this type of training here. Uh, so if you're on a trial version, you can join Jeremy's um, Thursday uh, webinars uh, to kind of get some, uh, some pre-training there. So, all right, guys, um, we'll wrap it up there.